the, as you all know, the prognosis of children with idiopathic pulmonary hypertension is very bad. Even now, with all these new uh, drugs, the survival at five years is uh, around uh, 75%, and the survival uh, without transplantation is even lower, around 50%. And the results are not very much better in secondary associated pulmonary hypertension, except in patients with Eisenmenger syndrome, in whom the survival at five years in children may be as high as 90%. And this is a, a confirmation of the prognosis in general of the Eisenmenger syndrome, which is not so bad because the survival at five years in adult patients is very high and the mortality usually begin only around 40 or 50 years of age. So the question is, is it possible to change the very bad prognosis of idiopathic pulmonary hypertension in children into a better prognosis of Eisenmenger physiology? And of course, this is not a good, a very new idea because in this uh, uh, treatment algorithm, which is usually used in children with pulmonary hypertension, before the final step of transplantation, it is usually recommended to proceed with atrial septostomy, which is to create Eisenbinger syndrome with ASD. The idea to do a POTS shunt is exactly the same. It is to create Eisenmenger physiology, not with an ASD, but with a PDA. And uh, to tell you the truth, this idea came from my colleague in Paris, Professor Daniel Sidi, who for many years tried to convince me to do this operation. And it was a little bit difficult to convince me. And to tell you all the truth, the first patient that I operated upon but this was, if I remember well, in 1998, I did a big surgical mistake because I was very much afraid of doing a true POTS anastomosis with all these very big arteries, and I put a small conduit, Dacron conduit, 8 millimeter, between the pulmonary artery and the descending aorta. And this, is, this was a big mistake for two reasons. First of all, 8 millimeter is too small, and this was not able to equalize the pressure in the aorta and in the pulmonary artery. And secondary, uh, the patient died suddenly three days after surgery from a massive hemorrhage, probably from a rupture of the suture between the dacron and the pulmonary artery. So this patient who died because of surgery and who was who had not a true POTS, was not included in the remaining of the talk. And I am going to talk now only on true POTS anastomosis. The, uh, of course, it is indicated only in patients with suprasystemic pulmonary hypertension. The goal is to equalize the pressure in the aorta and in the pulmonary artery. So this is going to unload the right ventricle and to improve left ventricular function, as you will see. And therefore, to avoid sudden death due to a, a pulmonary hypertensive crisis. The interesting po point when comparing POTS with ASD is that oxygenated blood is going to the brain and to the coronary arteries and to the myocardium, whereas only the desaturated blood is going to the lower body. During the last 10 years, 12 patients were operated in Paris, in Necker en Malade, or in a, a Marina Long Hospital. The first eight patients of this series were reported two years ago in the annals of thoracic surgery. As you can see, the mean age was nine years. They all had suprasystemic pulmonary hypertension despite what was called or considered as optimal medical therapy. They were very ill, 
all had multiple episodes of syncope, and most of them had uh, very frank signs of a right heart failure. The operation is technically not difficult. Through a left thoracotomy, the descending aorta and the left pulmonary artery are very close to each other, and the goal is to uh, construct a direct anastomosis which must be large enough to equalize the pressure. We consider that this must be at least 12 to 40 uh, millimeter of length. Here is uh, some results. As you can see, the uh, post anastomosis between the descending aorta and the left artery. Another patient with a smaller one, another one with a big one, and you can see the shunt from the right to the left. So, the results. Two patients died, not immediately in the operating room, but a few days, 11 and 13 days postoperatively on the ward after having left the ICU. They uh, had sudden low cardiac output. We suppose that they had some uh, pulmonary hypertensive crisis, which is interesting is that in these two patients, the treatment with vasodilators was stopped very quickly after surgery. And this was probably, again, a big mistake. And we now recommend to go on treat with the treatment even after the post-anastomosis. There were a few uh, complications. The interesting point is that during a mean follow-up of 6.5 years, there was no late mortality and all the patients are alive and in a bad, better functional status. The first patient who had this pots anastomosis, just a few words, it was uh, a, ch a child who had a, a neonatal arterial switch for TGA. At the age of two years, he had uh, suprasystemic pulmonary hypertension. He was put on the waiting list for heart lung transplantation. There was no donor, he was deteriorating and he had a POTS shunt at the age of four years, and he is still alive and in not so bad condition uh, now 10, 10 years later. So all the patients improved. None had syncope of right heart failure, and the walking distance increased from 50% of normal to nearly 70% of normal. Only one of these patients was uh, wind from uh, medical therapy, and most of them still have a vasodilator therapy with one or two drugs. Here is some examples. Before the shunt, very dilated right ventricle with a left ventricle which is completely compressed by the right one. After the shunt, you can see that the <coughs> left ventricle can recover a much better shape, and it is not surprising that there is some improvement in left ventricular function. Regarding the saturations, as expected, the saturation in the upper part of the body was more or less normal, whereas there was some desaturation in the lower part, which was very uh, marked just after surgery, but a few months or years after surgery, the desaturation on the lower part of the body was around for, uh, uh, 80 to 85 percent, so it was acceptable. I know that some uh, other patients had this kind of surgery, one in Giessen, this was reported by uh, Dietmar, one in Copenhagen. Uh, last year, I was invited by Victor Tsang to assist him for a patient in London, who is doing very well a few months after surgery, and more recently, another patient had this operation by Jose Fragata in, in Lisbon. So what are the problems? Of course, this is not a difficult operation for the surgeon, but this is a risky operation for the patient because uh, anesthesia and uh, dec uh, lateral decubitus may be uh, very dangerous in patients with severe pulmonary hypertension. There is a risk of bleeding, and I uh, say again that I really think that uh, the use of a conduit must be avoided, and it is 
much better to do a true direct anastomosis between the aorta and the pulmonary artery. And uh, as I said before, we think that it is very important not to stop a medical treatment, but on the contrary, to go on medical treatment at least for several months after surgery. This operation is uh, indicated only if the pulmonary hypertension is in suprasystemic. <clears throat> this is, of course, completely useless and probably even deleterious in the pulmonary hypertension is not systemic. And the main drawback is the desaturation of the lower body with the risk of paradoxical emboli, of renal dysfunction, and of polycythemia, <coughs> which in our experience is, for the time being, not uh, very severe. What are the alternatives? As I said, it is usually recommended to uh, do an arterial septostomy <coughs> by a percutaneous way. The rationale for that is more or less the same. The, at the beginning, as far as I could read, there was a risk which is decreasing, and the results are more or less the same with an uh, in, in improvement in survival, improvement in functional status, and improvement in right ventricular and left ventricular function. There are two drawbacks. First of all, the uh, ASD may close spontaneously. This could be overcome by using a device which is fenestrated and calibrated in order to reduce the severity of desaturation. And the main drawback is that desaturation is systemic and with probably uh, <laughs> poten potential deleterious consequences on the brain and on the myocardium. The second alternative, as was uh, presented by the previous speaker, is uh, lung transplantation. But uh, for children, there is a very severe organ shortage so that the mortality on the waiting list is very high. And as you could see, the results of bilateral lung, trans trans lung transplantation or heart lung transplantation are far from being optimal with a late survival around 20 to 25 percent only. So not very satisfactory. What are the perspectives regarding uh, POTS shunt in this condition? First perspective, and this was uh, already discussed by Professor Schranz, in some patients there is a very small pro-patent PDA and it is possible to delight and stent this PDA. This has been done by uh, my colleague Bujelmin in Paris in five patients with four satisfactory early results and one uh, perioperative death. So you can see this patient with a very small PDA, the stent, and exactly the same results with before creation of the shunt, a very dilated right ventricle, a small left ventricle, and after the shunt, a left ventricle which recovers a normal function with the stent and the shunt from the right to the left. The second perspective is a step further. This has been reported last year by the Boston Group. This is the percutaneous creation of the post shunt even in patients without a PDA. This was performed in four patients by putting a covered stent between the left pulmonary and the ascending aorta. One patient died of bleeding, which is not very surprising. One patient died uh, after procedure from a, a lung infection, but two patients had the satisfactory results uh, several months after the procedure. The advantage of this kind of stent either through a, a duct or uh, constructed like this, is that the stent can be dilated if necessary, or it can be closed also if the desaturation is too severe or if the patient is scheduled for lung transplantation. Finally, uh, this uh, study has been conducted in Paris by Professor Seraph. Uh, in the animals, and I think it's a very good idea, is a creation of the pot shunt with a system 
which allows only a shunt from the right to the left. Using Dacron or Gore-Tex, at, at, uh, at the level of the anastomosis between the uh, pulmonary artery and the aorta, the uh, device allows shunt from the right to the left when the pulmonary hypertension is suprasystemic, whereas if pulmonary hypertension decreases, the uh, shunt closes so that there is no left to right shunt. This procedure, which has, to my knowledge, never been used in humans, could enlarge the uh, potential indications of the POTS shunt in patients with severe pulmonary hypertension, even if it is not always suprasystemic. So to conclude, of course, this is a palliative procedure, but it provides significant improvement in survival as well as in functional status. If necessary, it does not preclude lung transplantation because it is possible to close the pot shunt with a percutaneous procedure, and I think that it really needs further evaluation, particularly regarding the new techniques that I have uh, presented. And this is my last slide. It is interesting to see that when POTS uh, described his, his procedure in uh, 1946, he said it seemed only fair to choose those patients whose condition was such that without aid, the future was hopeless. And I think this is a perfect illustration of the POTS shunt revival. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.